because it keeps all those layers together. It's never a bad thing. So here's a, you can see there's a seam there where I've joined the strips together and I press them open so they sit nice and flat. And I don't have a problem with that. I know some people say doing it on the diagonal reduces the bulk. But like I said, I don't have a problem with it. So um, I never sew on the diagonal. But that's just me. It's okay if you want to do it a different way. Okay, so stop a quarter of an inch. Spin it round with the needle, pull it slightly forward. So here we are again, we're folding all the way back. So we've got a nice right angle here. Keep that in place, bring it forward again. So there's our flap and put it under the foot, needle down to keep it secure. And off we go. Now that stitch length is working for me, so I'm going to to leave that. Now, so I've got some threads on the quilt that will be sewn in when I'm doing the binding and the quilting. So I've used the westerly two-inch circles as a going across the diagonals of the half square triangles. I, I'm, I don't know why, there's obviously somebody would know explain, but when I do a linear pattern, so something that's very angular, I like to quilt in curves. I just go the opposite way. Um, nothing wrong with quilting straight lines, just the way my brain works, I suppose. So nice and steady. Don't go whizzing off because you want to make sure you've still got all those layers in place. Make sure it's still nicely lined up. Nothing more frustrating to start sewing on the back section and realise you've missed a whole chunk. Not a happy position to be in. Okay, so here's the last corner. So we fold all the way away, get that right angle, bring it back, slide it under, foot down, needle down, and off we go again. Now obviously this is not a huge quilt, so it's not going to take a long time. If a disaster happens and you get to the end and find you haven't got enough binding it's a little bit short you measured it too short this would be the section where you realize that uh, I haven't got enough as you can see I've got still got plenty and we're nearly at the end so if that would were to happen you don't have to obviously unpick but you would perhaps need to stop sewing this on and add a little piece in right so we're nearly back at the start so here's my here's the loose tail so what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim and cut it an angle so I've got a point And I'm going to, so there's the point of the, the fold and we're going to overlay that, take the pin out and tuck the tail inside. So that sits nice and flat. So take your time over that, get that nice and flat, pull that back up a little bit because you don't want to get a, any tucks in this at this stage okay now the last part the sewing take your time so you've got quite a lot of layers that you're going through here which is why it's easier to have made that stitch length a bit longer 
when you get to where you started, I'm just going to do a little reverse stitch just to tighten that and cut thread. Okay, so that we're now we've sewn all the way around. What I will do now is trim off all that excess wadding and backing. And when we get to the corners, you can see already we've got that nice mitered edge. And what we trim, trim all the wadding off and then roll this to the back. So we would be hand stitching this into place and the mitered corner will happen. It's hard to see it when you've only got a little bit there and it just finishes off in a much nicer edge and that you can trim off any threads there sew through any threads that you've got here left over from your quilting okay so i hope that helps <laughs>